so this is a SH-101. I bought it uh, a couple of years ago, but it had some needed some work, which is why I got it for a relatively affordable price. The first thing that it needed was a Curtis chip, a new voice. The VCO was dead. So I bought a 3340 Curtis chip. I went to a shop. I had them put it in. And it was a little more costly than I wanted to spend. So there is one more issue with the synth, and that is the sustain slider. And instead of sending it to the shop, which I may end up doing anyway if I get this wrong, I bought a, a new sustain slider, and I'm going to open this thing up and try to fix it. Currently, the sustain just kind of is intermittent. It's supposed to be sustaining now. So you can see it's got issues. Just a reminder, I am not a professional. I don't do electronics at all. I'm just a guy who's not afraid to open something up and see how it works and see if I can fix it myself. So let's see how this goes. All right, so starting off, I'm gonna take off each one of these, each one of these slider knobs. Hard to take off, no they're not. Here, let me put a towel down so that it doesn't scratch it up or bend anything. It's a very light board, it's very plasticky. Some of these are missing. Now the posts that these go into are very pla are plastic posts as well, and they snap off over the years, they come off, uh, and they're very difficult to replace. I got lucky on this one that it just has these three missing and it still keeps it pretty pretty solid in there. But um, something to note when you buy one, check and see how much play there is with regards to the base of this. This is metal. I think this is the only thing metal. Is it metal? I think so. This is the only part that's metal, I think, in, is not, in the whole thing is the bottom of the board. The rest of it's all plastic. You need to remove all the screws except for these two. And remember these these two here in the middle are the only ones that are machine threaded. So I usually use this. I unscrew this a little bit and use these two as a handle to kind of pull the rest of it up because it's hard to grab it. And there's the bottom side. Yeah, so if you look closely, you can see where the front screws, uh, the posts snapped. So probably from over tightening, this guy is messed up too. So in order to replace that, it's difficult to do without having to go screw all the way through, which you don't want to do because then it messes up the, you can see it through the other side. The center posts have these metal ones, which are much better. Anyway, so this board, on the back side of it, as you can see, it's a few layers here. This looks to be the, the actual synthesizer itself, uh, and then underneath it are going to be all the controllers and the sliders. So I'll disconnect all of these, where all these cables are fastened into the board, and then I'll remove the board. I don't know that these two actually pull up, so what I'm going to do, no they don't. So I'll just disconnect them here from the keyboard, and then I'll unscrew this guy. And that's the answer to that. Take the screw out, put it back in here just so we don't lose it. Please remember that I'm not a professional. I do not do this for a living. This is my dining room table, so it looks like it wants to fold up these ribbons here that are soldered in. A little frightening. It looks like when you take it off, it's going to flap over. A little disconcerting there, but let's see what happens next. I see one, two, three, maybe four, five, six, seven screws. Maybe seven screws here that undo it. Let's start with this guy. this up and then we'll roll it back to see ooh this cool little battery protective thing here this is the description of how the batteries go in but it goes like this so you can see it when you open up the battery compartment and now here's the slider board and it looks like I got one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws. So looking closely at the bender and the volume side, he looked really closely in order to get at this one screw. You can barely see it there. There it is. Look at the warp in this board. <laughs> oh, there's another, there's another one in this corner, so it's actually 13. Thing coming up. That screw is gonna just fall loose there. And there's the board. And here's the front side. Very dirty. It's upside down. And I'm gonna be replacing this sustain. If I look at the back side of the slider, the good news is it's really looks to be one, two, three, four, five solder points, which is not, not the end of the world. One, two, three, four, five on each. Let's hope I don't mess it up. One thing I do need to do is get that screw out too. All right. So this thing unfolds like that, not easily because it's old, so be careful on these. By the way, here is a replacement one that I got from eBay. And the sustain ones, so you know, are different than the attack, decay, and release. For some reason, the sustain slider is different. I don't know why, um, but when you go to buy them, I noticed that they, um, they sell the ADR, and then separately you have to find a sustain, which I did here. I'll be using this fairly inexpensive solder sucker. It's heating up. They're not very expensive, these ones. There's some very expensive ones that are electric and vacuum and really do the job well. But again, I'm a novice. I don't want to pay a hundred and some odd bucks for a, or 200 bucks for one that vacuums when I don't do this all the time. So I've used this once before. It seems to work out okay. There's no light on it that shows you that it's on or not. You just plug it in and wait a while. Here we go. We're going to get all five of these. It's ready to... These pieces are um, bent, as you can see. Purposely, these these two posts here are bent, so they kind of hold hold themselves in when they um, when you go to solder it. I guess makes sense to me. There's the old one out. Pretty easy. Came out really easily and pretty cleanly. That solder sucker, cheap as it was, did a good job. And now the new one goes in, also with crooked little uh, posts here. These little guys, crooked. Hopefully, I can just go right in there. And yeah, the little, those little hooks do a good job of holding it. As far as this slider is concerned, it's a little wider in the frame. These are a little narrower, so let's hope. Hopefully, I didn't buy a piece of junk on eBay that suggested that it was uh, what it was not. We'll find out. All right, giving it a shot.
That should do it. Had to put some light on it, but it turns out in, um, in the process of putting this board back, it's best to go ahead and um, I think I'm going to go ahead and remove this in order to seat this back in its spot, this, uh, this L shape of the, of the board, this guy here, because it, it's supposed to go underneath this one. So I'm going to pop this board off. Looks like five screws. One, two, three, four, and five. Throughout this whole board inside, they're all pretty much the same screw, it looks like. So all the circuit circuit board screws are all the same. This is the touchiest one because along with this cable here, there's a little bit of a there's a ground going from this post on the circuit board to this ground, uh, this metal metal grounding bar, so you gotta be a little careful. Oops. Little guys, just roll it tilt up enough just to get that board tightening. Let's get it started. Okay, for the most part, I'm gonna put this thing kind of back in. The mis biggest mistake I've made in the past with getting into these electronics is forgetting to to reconnect. Oops is forgetting to reconnect the ground. I did this on a TR-707 and putting it back together and I didn't connect the, one of the grounds and it actually ended up frying the, frying the whole thing I had to send it in. But anyway, don't forget all your grounds. And it works. Success. Thumbs up on this one. Thanks for watching and tune in for more.